all right guys and girls today what we are going to look at is we're going to look at how ph affects enzyme activity for this equipment what we will need is iodine solution this here is a 2.5 ml syringe we're going to use what we're changing is the ph so we're going to have different ph buffers this one happens to be ph 7 a ph buffer is basically a solution which does not change ph readily so in other words this will stay close to ph 7 as much as it possibly can so that's what a buffer solution is we'll, we're going to use an amylase solution of one percent and a starch solution of one percent that is the concentration and each one will have its own 2.5 mil syringe we will also need a spotting tile now i've numbered them the reason why i've numbered them is so that i know the order in which i'm going to play the solution in once i get to that part of the experiment now the whole point of this experiment is that iodine is an indicator for starch so in other, in other words if you have starch and you place iodine into it the iodine will turn blue black color i'm going to show you what a negative result looks like and then show you what a positive result looks like now as you can remember a negative result we fill up a test tube with water and then add our iodine to it there should be no color change because of course water does not contain starch i'll show you that now so i've just added the iodine in and the iodine is an orange brown color there's no change to iodine this shows a negative result for starch this is another test tube but this time it has starch present because it's a starch solution and i'm going to add the iodine into it and that should give us our positive result as you can see the starch has turned into a blue black color this is a positive test for starch. So the idea behind this experiment is the amylase solu solution, the enzyme, will break down the starch. We're going to test how long it takes to break it down when we're changing the pH. What we expect eventually over time is that the iodine will turn blue-black until all the starch has been used up and converted into sugar by the amylase solution. Then there will be no color change. Now it's important to note in an experiment all variables must be controlled that is to say kept the same except one you will be using loads of different uh, ph solutions so you'll be using ph 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 right so the thing that's changing is the ph the thing that are being kept the same that's the control variables are the concentration of amylase the concentration of starch the volume of starch the volume of amylase and the volume of ph that we use but the only thing that's changing again is the ph number so we can start this experiment off by filling up our spotting tile with iodine and you only need one drop of iodine from the pipette here i've just placed the iodine into the spotting tiles now it could be that you might want to get two or three spotting tiles completely done just in case the reaction is not over by the time you fill your last one so you might want two or three spotting tiles filled just in case okay so here what i've done is i've labeled three test tubes okay so i don't get confused so this one says um it's got my initial on it and it says amylase it's supposed to say amylase anyway but it's been rubbed off a little bit uh this one says ih and this is my ph buffer solution that i'm going to place into there and this one here has ih and starch so i'm going to add equal amounts of the appropriate thing into each one so for my amylase i'm going to add 2.5 mils of amylase i'm going to add 2.5 mils of ph4 buff buffer solution and i'm going to add 2.5 mils of starch now this is 2.5 mil of my ph7 uh, buffer solution and you have to make sure that you're at eye level and looking at it at eye level because this is what's called parallax error if you don't do it parallax error is not reading measurement properly because you are not at eye level and it's important that you know that parallax error makes your experiment results more inaccurate so i'm going to transfer uh, that ph7 solution into this one uh, which should be labeled ph7 guys but you know this way you have to label things up properly so ph7 uh, into the ph7 test it's very important to avoid contamination notice i'm keeping my syringe with the ph7 buffer solution i'm going to do the same for the amylase and starch 2.5 mils of each 
So I've added all of those in and now I'm going to use this bad boy here which I can't believe I didn't know we had which is wicked and what I'm going to do this is a water bath this is keeping us at a stable constant 35 degrees celsius which means we are controlling uh, the temperature as well so this is another control variable we are keeping it the same so here's my amylase uh, going in and basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to let it acclimatize this is my pH 7 I'm going to let it all three acclimatize to the temperature so I'm going to keep them in for about a minute or two and then I'm going to transfer all of them into one test tube I'm going to transfer it into the amylase and then what will happen as soon as you do that is we're going to go back here so I'm going to give it about a minute or so to acclimatize and I'll be right back while I'm waiting for that to acclimatize, here's my table that I'll do. Here's pH, because our independent variable is always the one on the left hand side. Uh, and time taken for iodine to not change colour. I'm going to have three tries so I can work out an average. And the time needs to be in seconds. Right, so that's been about a minute. What I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer all of these over into one test tube. Now, once I've done that, I'm then going to start the stopwatch and then I'm going to straight away use a clean pipette to transfer some of that into my pipette and then I'm going to place it onto here and that will give me a colour change then I'm going to continuously now whatever remains in the pipette I'm going to place back in and then I'm going to do it again every 20 seconds I'm going to add more in here okay so I'm going to do this one handed best I can so I'm going to transfer that into there excellent I'm going to transfer this one into here as well and I'm going to make sure that nothing leaves okay so my stopwatch I'm going to start straight away so this is time zero and I'm going to straight away take a little bit of that mixture from here and just place a dot in right and that's gone black now, every 20 seconds I've put the remainder in uh, so I don't want anything left in my pipette every 20 seconds I'm going to draw some more out and place it in there okay, So that's 20 seconds I'm going to draw some more out and just put a dot on there right let's place that back in place the remainder back in wait another 20 seconds and watch for the color change until it stops changing well, that's actually not bad for one handed hmm Right, so it's another 20 seconds, so I'm going to take some out, uh, put a little drop in, and then place the remaining back into that test tube. So wait another 20 seconds. And the colour is, there is a big difference in colour change. Okay, so I'm at, no, that's 20 seconds gone again. Take a bit out, add that little bit in, and put the remainder back in because we don't want the temperature to be affected so we need to make sure that it's back in so I'm on my seventh well now so it's another 20 seconds so I'm going to take that out put a drop on and it's changing colour less and less and less in fact I think by the eighth one we might be done here Okay, so that's 20 seconds gone. And yeah, I, I'm going to say, well, it's very difficult to tell. This is one of the problems with these types of experiments. It's quite difficult to tell, but I don't think it's complete yet. So I keep waiting. And this is one of the weaknesses of these experiments, guys, is that it kind of gets a bit difficult to see. And that is stopped. That has definitely stopped as far as I'm concerned. So I'm going to stop. So I've stopped it right there. And so the time taken, while it's 20, 40, 1 minute, 20, 40, 2 minutes, 20, 40, 3 minutes. So you have to convert that into seconds. So I'm going to put those results in here. So I had 3 minutes, which is, uh, well, 3 times 60. And that's 180 seconds. So for pH 7, it is 180 seconds for my first try. I'm going to try it twice more to get an average and you're going to do that for different pHs and that is uh, basically the experiment now to explain why this has happened right uh, what we need to see is well basically the enzyme amylase has broken down the starch into sugars 
Now iodine tests for starch and it does not test for sugars. So here the amylase had really not broken down much starch. So we've got loads of starch here. By the time we get to here, the amylase had broken down loads and loads of starch and therefore we get a negative test for starch. In other words, it's all sugars here and no starch. Okay, so then what you'll have to do with your results is plot a graph. The graph is going to be of uh, pH, because that's the independent variable, so it's on the x-axis, against our dependent variable, which was the time taken for the iodine to stop changing colour. And that's going to be measured in seconds. And you'll have a graph like this. Okay, so what this shows is that In other words, at pH 7 roughly, it takes less time for the iodine to stop changing colour. Whereas at a higher pH, it takes more time before the iodine stops changing colour. And on both sides here, what's happening is the enzymes are being denatured, the active site is being denatured, and therefore uh, the reaction is taking longer to occur. Now of course we can change this graph into a rate graph and I'll show you how to do that in a bit. Okay so this is how you work out the rate of a reaction from the time taken. Okay but so what we've got is we've got these three made up results for pH 7. So I've got 180 seconds for my first try, 177 and then 178 for my last try. Now firstly I need to work out an average. Of course an average and a mean is the same thing. To do that, you add them up and divide it by the data points. So we've got three data points. So it's 180 at 177 at 178 divided by 3. That equals 178.3, but to the nearest whole number, or the, to the nearest whole second, that's 178 seconds. Now, to work out the rate, what you do is you do 1 divided by 178. 0 0.0056, which is the same as saying 5.6 times 10 to the negative 3. And you can do the same for all the other pHs. Then you can plot the rate against pH and you'll have a graph that looks like this. This is a graph that you're more used to seeing and it's showing pH 7 is the optimum pH at which there is the most rate of reaction. Wicked. That's that done. That's the experiment done. Any questions, let me know, etc, etc, etc.